everybody. So, it always ends up that I'm making the video that I say I don't want to be making. <laughs> and this is kind of along those lines. This is a video that I never thought I would have to make. I'm not upset that I'm making it, but um, it's, it's a surprise to me, so I guess between friends and family and YouTubers and other people in the community and all this kind of stuff, it's um, sort of easy to take advantage of the medium and kind of tell everybody everything all at once and not have to you know, futz around with this and that, telling people, asking people, whatever, people asking you. So today, even though I have for 18 years and 9 months, so it's, pretty, it's almost 19 years totally, um, that I was declared and remained in good standing of a high. Um, I declared on March 21st, 93, which is Nauru's 150. So I'm three months, three Gregorian months shy of my Baha'i birthday. 18 years and nine months. And, um, yeah, I called today, which I didn't even know you could do. You know, people write letters and whatever. And if I had to do a letter, I just thought I was going to list in it three things, basically. My name, the date of my declaration, and um, request to remove name from the rolls. So I was able to do it on the phone today. I just called up <laughs> uh, right on my little Android, found everything I needed to find out, and was able to take care of that. So now I am an unaffiliated member. <laughs> I am a former Baha'i. Um, I haven't gotten my confirmation letter back, but that's just a paper formality. So a really, really dear, wonderful friend of mine who um, has definitely played a part in my spiritual walk um, just casually asked me, you know, um, you know, how did you get to this place where things have changed for you? And um, this is part of what I wrote her. Well, it all started about 18 years and 9 months ago in Cambria when I declared. And there were always things about the faith I felt separated from. And I chose not to ignore them, but instead I would try to meditate and pray or learn more about them, uh, come to terms with them, some sort of obedience regarding it. But I think ultimately I was like Cinderella's stepsister and I couldn't make the shoe fit any longer. Um, but like a former spouse, I, I carry lots of feelings about it. I don't hold any grudges, and I will never disparage the faith. Um, I'm glad that people have it as their truth and their soul's recognition, but it's definitely not mine. I have a lot of intuitive dreams, and one of them in particular kept me in the faith for many, many years, just trying to learn what it meant trying to reconcile this over and over and over has definitely been a pressure on me. It even definitely caused depression at some times. I'm not saying there wasn't joy, because there was. I was satisfied a lot, and I was fulfilled, and there was spiritual depth development, absolutely. But I now think of it as, instead of who I am or was, um, just a step along the path, and now I'm free to do whatever it is that God has planned for me. I think he calls people to be exactly where they're supposed to be, at whatever time and for whatever reason, and that you couldn't even <laughs> not do it <laughs> if you wanted to. Whatever it is he's called you to. And I definitely feel that I was called into the faith. And I 
feel I was called out of it. Um, when you're a Baha'i, you know, they call you a seeker. Before you're a Baha'i, they call you a seeker if you're a person who, you know, is trying to learn about the faith or studies lots of other faiths and getting to actually read spiritual texts has been a very rich experience but an incredibly surprising one um, of late I could say and definitely being able to read certain things um, still while in context um, was more than a shocking discovery so I just felt I could no longer support or remain connected to some of that. And even though those those particular statements are like nullified by Baha'u'llah's new age for the state, um, I, I couldn't support it. All the beauty and the spiritual common sense I still believe in. I always did. It's a part of my heart. So. Those things are absolutely parallel, but they are parallel. They will no longer bisect, intersect. I don't think I have to be a Baha'i to have those understandings of the world um, or to view God in that way or people. Or um, I don't have to do. I don't have to be a Baha'i to accomplish that any longer. It has been my identity externally and internally, and now, after all this time, it's definitely a huge transition, and um, the friends who will make, will do because they will, and the friends who will not, at least I'm not a covenant breaker, so you can still talk to me. Um, um, I'm glad for every song and every I prayer I got it. that I ever shared, okay. and I'm grateful for every friendship around the world. I'm grateful for all the loving support and the true kindness that was before and without faith at all. Human kindness. Um, that has no label. So, I guess it was kind of like a Christmas gift to myself because I obviously couldn't wait till Monday because that would be like late for Christmas. So, yeah. I guess that's that. <laughs> and yeah. Wishing love and peace to everyone. And that's the end of my crying video for the year. <laughs> I hope everybody has a great Christmas. And, uh, yeah, take care.